I probably received the influence from my sister. My sister was a painter. But at a certain point of my life, of course, I had a good manuality even when I was a child because I do the, the things by myself with a small knife and things like this. I started uh, um, to do that, to develop that when I was in Seychelles, I'm talking about 35 years ago. I was hosted by a friend of mine, a photographer called Gianpaolo Barbieri, that he's doing it. He built the third property on the, on the islands and I start to help him to do something at, at, the, at, the, at the new property and things like this. I consider myself very, very lucky because uh, I didn't plan anything, or more or less I didn't plan anything uh, about my work, about my career. The things is, is going to happen every time. And of course, uh, I'm doing my best all, all the time, and I did my best all the time to do, to keep that happen. You know what I mean? So it's source of the, of, uh, of woods that's called Albizia wood, and it comes from uh, that uh, tree called uh, Albizia, a tree from the Acacia families, and it, it's coming from all the equatorial area we have on the planet. And in this case, it's coming from, uh, from Seychelles, where, uh, Seychelles Island, where I have a small workshop and where usually I'm going once uh, or two times a, a year to, to find the sources and to, to do the first step of, uh, of my works. The first step is mean uh, um, by the trees from the uh, govern uh, Seychelles government and cut uh, the shapes locally and after two containers I ship in, a, in, a, in Europe, in Milan in these cases, and where I stock uh, and where we're waiting for dry men and things like this, and where after many, many months, sometimes years, in this case, for example, for that bench, I'm waiting two years, and after we finish and we assemble it, if there is the assemblation part or, or whatever. When I'm going to Seychelles, I forget about my shoes, uh, uh, and, I uh, and I'm working like, like this uh, with the chainsaw machine in the middle of the jungle. I have a, a small workshop there, but imagine it's something like a roof with the four <laughs> piloti and, uh, and that's it. So it's not, uh, it's not a workshop uh, you, can, you can have uh, in, uh, in Europe or whatever. I think it works for everyone, no? When you stay in the nature, when you stay in contact with the nature, you, you have other, other stimulation, other inspiration, other, other quality of thought. Of course, sometimes uh, I combine technology but uh, not for do that kind of, uh, of, of work. When you use your hand to do something, uh, behind the hand there is a, a heart, there is a person. Behind the machine there is a technology, that's it. There is no emotion. There is no emotion in what you do. And they, you cannot transfer emotion if you don't feel emotion. Three pieces have in common that feeling to stretch a bit. You see that shape is like you stretch and you and, and you turn a bit. That is the same reason you have here, and that is the same reason you have, you have in terms of, of, of that length, you stretch and you have that kind of thing. And so there is a geometrical shapes between a, and close to a very organic shape. And it's the same feeling you can have here. Here is a, a very organic surfaces with a geometrical element. I consider myself a craftsman. In Italian, a craftsman is artigiano. In my way, craftsman, I think, is it's a noble word. It's a very nice word. The success for me is when the people, when the client, the collector, or any, everybody, start to touch the pieces. Because that is mean you start to use another, you involve yourself with another sense. Because usually we use the visual one, no? We use only our eyes. But when you start to touch, you, you, you start to have another perception of the, of, of the things. And, and for me, this is very important.